regards the hotline presentation for today on uh, frontiers in interventional and devices uh, treatment. It's my privilege to have uh, Professor Sidney Goldstein from the U.S. Uh, co-chairing this session with me. And uh, first of all, I would like to remind uh, that there will be an ESC spokesperson. It's uh, Professor Uwe Zeimer that will be available at the end of uh, this press conference for an independent comments that uh, you would like to ask him. If you don't mind, just to stand up or just to sh show hands so we know uh, they know who you are. And I also remind the speakers that uh, uh, each talk will have five minutes and then there will be some time uh, for questions uh, by the journalists. So I would like uh, to ask the first uh, speaker, uh, Professor Mabo uh, Philip, and uh, he will uh, present remote follow-up of patients uh, implanted with the NICD, the prospective randomized uh, Ivatel study. Philip. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege today to present to you the Evatel study results. The Evatel trial was uh, supported by a grant from the French Ministry for Health and was coordinated by the University Hospital of Rennes in France. The background of the trial, you all know that the implantable cardiac defibrillator is a validate therapy to prevent uh, cardiac sudden death and total mortality in selected population. So today we have a fast increase in implant rate according to EEC guidelines and a large cohort of patients to follow every three or six months according to manufacturer guidelines. A new technology is now available allowing to perform follow-up using remote data transmission. The aim of the Evatel trial was to evaluate the safety and efficiency of ICD remote follow-up as compared to the conventional in-office follow-up. It is a randomized, prospective, open-label multicenter fringe trial conducted in 30 centers with two parallel groups, the control group with a conventional follow-up at in-office every three months, and the remote follow-up group with uh, remote transmission to the implant center at every three months. All the commercially available devices with remote function were implanted in the protocol and it was uh, in uh, the real life for manufacturers. The follow-up was one year for all patients. The primary endpoint is a clinical combined endpoint. It's the rate of major cardiovascular events occurring during the first years after ICD implantation. And the MCE were defined as death, all cause, hospitalization for cardiovascular event, inappropriate or ineffective therapies delivered by the ICD. The main result, in terms of uh, primary endpoint, 210, 210 episodes were observed in the control group, the same value in the human group in the pair protocol analysis. The rate is 28.5% in the control group and 30.2% in the control group, and the p-value is 0.7, so there is no difference between the event rate between the two groups. As Evatel was a non affiliated trial, we have tested the hypothesis. It was based on the MC rate difference in percentage between the two groups with a 90% confident interval. In intent to treat analysis, this non affiliated hypothesis was well validated with a p value of 0.02. But uh, this uh, non inferiority hypothesis was not validated during the per protocol analysis as uh, the 90% confident interval is 5.7, crossing the non inferiority margin of 5% with a p-value of 0.08. And the difference between the two populations in the control group, there is no crossover from remote to, from control to remote except one patient. But in the remote group, we observe 45 crossover from the remote to the control group follow-up due to unexpected phone transmission of the remote data. To conclude, we can say that Evatel is today the first control trial aimed to at assessing the impact of ICD remote follow-up on clinical outcomes. The non inferiority hypothesis between the two groups was validated on intent to treat analysis, but not on per protocol analysis. 
Nevertheless, a difference between the group and the primary endpoint has not been demonstrated. There were no differences in survival rate with uh, 27 rate deaths and 30 deaths. And we observe a significant reduction, minus 37% of inappropriate therapy in the remote group. The result of Evatel do not question the place of ICD remote follow-up as a safe alternative to in-office follow-up, but no impact on the prevention of major, major clinical events was demonstrated. A cost effectiveness analysis is also planned and the results are still pending. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for the presentation. We now open for questions. I just want to remind that all the questions uh, should be asked during the, the press conference. The speakers may have to rush to their session, so I would appreciate that any questions you may have, you will ask them now. So please. Madam? Yeah. To the microphone, right there. I guess you have to go up and do it. And that, could you comment on the difference remote, monitor, remote monitoring would make to patients and clinicians' lives? So for the quality of lives, we do not observe any differences between the, the two groups. And uh, we have a, a good uh, agreement of patients for this new technology. All the crossover we observe from remote to control were majority due to technical problem with essentially uh, the telephone line, but no problem with patients. Any, please? Sherry Boshert with Cardiology News. I'm sorry, it was difficult to hear you because the speaker was not working on your slide about the primary endpoint non-inferiority hypothesis. You talked, uh, you said a little bit at the end about how many events were in each group or something. Can you talk about that slide again, please? Okay. This one? Uh, no, the next one. That one. This one. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the difference between intent to treat analysis and per protocol analysis is essentially related due to the number of uh, crossover. In the control group, we observe only one crossover from control to remote, as the patient asks to have a remote system at home. In the remote group, due to technical problem essentially, we observe 45 crossover from remote to control. So the number of patients in per protocol analysis is a little bit lower as compared to the number of patients in intent to treat analysis. And is why the non inferiority hypothesis is validated if we consider intent to treat, but is not validated if we consider on per protocol analysis. Essentially to do this uh, uh, crossover, the number of crossover. Do you feel this is ready to be used widely? I, I think so for a conventional follow-up of the patient, uh, but we have uh, many, many questions to solve also. Essentially, the problem of reimbursement, both for the medical community, because uh, in France, uh, it's quite different from one, one country to another one. But uh, today in France, there is uh, no reimbursement for the medical communities for uh, remote follow-up. And there are also the problem of uh, financial uh, reimbursement for the industry. And uh, we are waiting for the result of the cost effectiveness analysis is still pending, probably next year. Please. Hi, I'm Peggy Peck. I'm with uh, MedPage today. So I, I'm wondering if you could just comment on this. Um, I, I, I don't exactly understand um, that there was a significant reduction of inappropriate therapies in the remote group. So yeah. I guess that that means that there was not a, a I mean, was it only in the remote group um, that there was a significant reduction of inappropriate therapies? And it seems to me that that um, that that reducing inappropriate therapies seems a valid goal of this. Uh, so could you comment on that? Yeah, you, you are right. No, we observe inappropriate therapy in both groups. The 77% reduction is a comparison between remote and control group. So the rate of inappropriate therapies was significantly lower with a p-value of 0 0.04 in the remote group as compared to the control group. So, so it's a, effectively a, a positive result for, in favor of remote follow-up. So what was the rate of inappropriate therapy in the control group and what was the rate in the remote group? Eight and five percent. 
So eight in the control and five. five. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Please, would you mind to go up to the microphone? Thank you. Chris Kaiser with MedPage today. Can you list some of the inappropriate therapies that you're talking about? So we have not uh, a core center for analysis of all the inappropriate therapy. So the information we have up to date, but it's not a validate information, so be careful. It's that this inappropriate therapy, as in the literature, are essentially related to atrial arrhythmia and especially atrial fibrillation. We have also some cases of uh, lead dysfunction, but majoritarily it's uh, atrial arrhythmia uh, induced uh, inappropriate therapy. Any other questions? We have one minute left. Okay, so we move to the next. Good. <clears throat> the next presentation is by...